Hello, St. Paul's. We look at Mark 12, verses 35 to 37, as we look at the good news about Jesus in Mark's gospel. Jesus continued teaching in the temple courts, and in this very short passage, Jesus is asking the people who are gathered around, why do the teachers of the law call the Messiah the son of David? Well, they called him the son of David because that was in the prophecies, that the Messiah would be a descendant of King David. But the point Jesus was making was significant. He wanted the people to think outside of the box because there was a very narrow thinking about the Messiah in those days. Think about the context. They had been conquered by the Romans. The Roman army was in occupation and there was a Roman governor and there was a king, but he was very much a puppet of Rome. The Romans were definitely in control. And thinking of the Messiah as the son of David, David, King David, was the greatest of the kings of the nation. It was the, the best era in the history of the people of God when David was king. So they were looking forward to the Messiah coming and being an even better David, kicking the Romans out and taking the throne himself. Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, God's chosen one to save his people. Jesus is the Savior, that he came to offer himself in sacrifice for our sins to save us, but to save us for his kingdom. He was bringing about, he is bringing about his kingdom, the kingdom of God. Jesus is Lord, that was the first confession of the Christian church. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is over all. He is above all. He is the one to whom we submit our will so that his will is done ahead of our will. That we obey him because he is Lord. He is Lord of Lords. But the word also has the sense of being master and teacher. He is the one from whom we learn. He is the one we follow and we do his will. Jesus is also our prophet, priest, and king. He is the prophet. He is the one who brings God's truth, God's word. In fact, he is God's living word. Of all that God has said to his people, Jesus is the most perfect representation of God himself. Jesus as prophet, as son of God, as God himself. Jesus is the great high priest. We do not need a go-between between us and God because Jesus fills that role. And Jesus is king. Jesus is the king of kings. He is king over all other kings. But he is not king just to fit the idea that the people in the first century had, nor is he king just to fit our idea of what we want him to be. We need to open our minds to all that Jesus is. We need to be open to the Lord Jesus to all that he would want to do in and through us. We cannot have a narrow view or a narrow understanding of who Jesus is. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, that he is meek, that he calls his followers to have love as our chief distinguishing feature, and he calls us to turn the other cheek. But the Bible also says that Jesus is the judge of humanity. The Bible says that Jesus came to bring a sword and division to this world. The Bible says that Jesus demands our highest loyalty. And the Bible tells us that Jesus requires us to repent, to turn away from our sin and turn toward him. Jesus is not a two-dimensional Messiah. Jesus is the fullness of all God wants in his Messiah. And when we pick and choose just little portions of who we want Jesus to be, 
we reduce him to less than he is. Let us never do that. Let us accept Jesus for who he is and all he is and all he has done for us and all he will do for us. To his glory, let's pray. Our God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is our Messiah, that he is Lord and Savior. We thank you that he is our prophet and priest and king. We thank you for the fullness of Scripture as it describes Jesus, as it describes the Messiah. Please, Lord, help us not to be narrow in our understanding and acceptance of Jesus, but to be open to all that Jesus is and does for us. Be glorified, Lord, we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you.